When it comes to paper and paper clutter in our homes, there are so many things that are coming in. Papers from school, papers from work, flyers, coupons, magazines, and I have really streamlined the process to three simple steps to keep that paper clutter under control, and I'm gonna share it with you today. Welcome back to Old World Home. My name is Hillary, if you are new here. So the three steps in my process for dealing with paper clutter or any papers that come into our home. First step is trash. Second step is short-term storage. And third step is long-term storage. So as far as the trash step, basically anything that comes in that's a store flyer that I have no interest in using or going to and looking through or a catalog or something that it just gives me some information that I don't even need to hold on to. Pretty much as soon as I check the mail every day, decide what is trash and get rid of it immediately. This also goes along with anything that comes into the home where I only need the information that's on it and I don't actually need the physical paper. So what I'll do is take out my planner and I will write down, say it's a date or a time or it's something where, again, I just need the information written down and put onto the calendar. You know, eventually I have to get directions to it or something like that. I can write down the address in my planner, write down any pertinent information and then just trash the actual physical paper. So moving on to short-term storage. This I would categorize as, again, maybe it's a invitation to something that you're going to and you want to, if you don't want to just write down the information, you want to hold on to the actual, you know, piece of paper until that event occurs. Then after the event, you can go ahead and get rid of it or it will be a long-term storage thing. Say it's a special you know, bridal shower, wedding, something like that. If you do want to hold on to that piece of paper long term, then you would store it with your long term storage, which we will talk about. Um, or maybe it's a bill that you have to pay. Maybe it's something that's outside of your typical bill payments, you know, utilities or things like that. I do hold on to those things again in my planner. I'll just open it up and stick it either in the month that we're in or just stick it all the way in the back. Um, and so that I know that I have it if I need to reference it. And then again, once it's paid, I can either file it for long term or I can go ahead and get rid of it. We do pay the majority of our bills online and a lot of them are auto pay. So we don't even need to ever get a physical piece of paper. And then, I mean, that's pretty much everything. Every, not everything is auto pay, but everything is being paid online. So we do not need to get statements. We don't need to get the physical bill. We know when to pay them and we pay them online. I know that's not for everybody. So if you do like to get the physical paper bill and pay it with that paperwork, again, you need to, after it's paid, trash it or put it in some sort of long-term storage. I mean, everything can be accessed online. So we have never had an issue, even though we've bought houses and sold houses and you know, had to access bank statements and things like that. Everything is available to you online. Any bills that you have paid, anything that's coming up, it is all stored on your account with each of those physical mortgage company or your bank or your utility companies. And if you ever need that information, you can easily retrieve it. So we don't feel the need to hold on to the physical statements that come in. Some more short term storage for us would be things that my kids are bringing from school or things that they are crafting at home. So my second grader, her teacher is very smart and she has this binder that they have been using all year long and this is where all of their paperwork goes so all of their worksheets that they've done progress reports any information she needs to send home that we need to read again we can read it take in the information write it down if it's something important and get rid of it or if it's something we want to keep we have this binder to store it in so if you if your kids are in school and their teachers have not provided something like this I would highly recommend it to have just one it's like a really thick one so it holds a lot of paperwork and then at the end of the year we can go through it see if there's anything we want to keep long term the long term storage or we can go ahead and just get rid of the binder altogether 
And then like I mentioned, kids crafts and kids papers that they just like to color at home or work on at home. This is a huge one for us. My girls are very much into crafting. So again, the short term storage is putting it on the refrigerator. And then after a while, if it has you know been enjoyed, we can get rid of it. Or if, again, if it's something that's really special and it really has like showcased their talent at their certain age, then I will store it long term. And then we have in the built-ins that are in our living room, we actually have a little cabinet and that's kind of like their craft cabinet for now. I don't know if it'll always be. It definitely does get out of control <laughs> right before I film this video. It was kind of out of control so i went through separated everything out so if there was you know construction paper that we could still use i put that aside and then pulled out anything that they had already colored or drawn and i actually had them go through it yes. girls can you go through this stack and see if there's anything that you're willing to get rid of because now that they are older i trust them to make that decision they can decide if it's something that they want to keep and something that they want to get rid of. They're pretty good about getting rid of. They definitely keep a lot more, but then anything that they do want to keep, we have a basket in their bedroom on their bookshelf. And that's kind of like a limiting container so that once that gets completely full, we really need to go through and decide what needs to go or what needs to go into long-term storage. Now, if they do draw something or write something that is really, really special that I want to keep, it's not necessarily a school related item. I do keep those special things in my bedside table drawer. It's just a small, very small section. So now let's talk about some long-term storage. So you saw this sitting next to me. This is where I have my kids' school long-term memory keeping items. So my oldest has been through preschool, kindergarten, first and second. So she has a little bit more in here. And then my preschooler right now, we are doing pre-K at home. I do store any, again, special crafts that we've done or things that highlight their skill level at that certain age. So this is how I have it. It's just a couple of um, tabbed um, folders, hanging folders. I did get this container at Walmart. It's from Sterilite and I think it's a really good size. It's not like, so big that it's hard for me to find a spot to put it. I actually keep it in our front coat closet so that's easy for me to access. It's not something that's, you know, put away in the attic or somewhere really hard to get to that I'm gonna, it's gonna deter me from wanting to quickly file away those special things. I do still take photos throughout the year to kind of, you know, just show their age and just how cute they are. I do have some photo documentation that I actually print out and I stick them in here. And the goal with this, I am pretty selective about the things I keep from them because the goal is that one day when they're grown up and they're either moving out of the house or something, it's some way that I can show them, you know, how cute the things were that they were doing at that age and what their skill level was like. And maybe when they have kids and the kids are their age when they were little, like I have some things from when I was in kindergarten and it's cute to show that to my daughters. So that's kind of what I am saving them for and I don't wanna save an overwhelming amount. I mean, I could easily have saved this entire bin full of just kindergarten. Like they do so much in kindergarten that, you know, if you save everything, if everything is special, then nothing is special because nothing has been set apart and nothing has been like highlighted and featured. If you just save a whole huge bin for every single school year and then they turn 18 or 20 and you say, here you go, here's all your school memories, they're not even gonna care. They're not gonna want all that stuff. They're gonna want a couple journals or a couple pieces of paper, a couple of you know books that they wrote when they were little and it's not an overwhelming amount for them. And then as far as long-term, you know, adult, personal storage, we have these four binders and this is essentially our filing system. The different categories are household, baby, medical, and personal. Now, to be perfectly honest, the baby category doesn't have all that much in it and what is in it, I could probably relocate birth certificates and their, you know, the ink stamps of their feet. Um, I don't even know what's in here. I definitely have some like paperwork that the hospital gives you that I really don't even care about now that I've had three. Um, but at the time that I made them, which I did set this system up a long time ago, I would say maybe seven years 
and it still works just fine. So in the household category, I keep things like basically anything that pertains to work that's been done on the house, um, tax bills, and any big receipts from like big purchases that we have made for the house. Um, there's really not a whole lot in here to be perfectly honest with you. Our property survey is in here too. A lot of those things can be accessed, but they are more difficult to get and you might even need to pay for them. So I definitely wanna hold on to things like that. You could definitely put them in a safe if you are concerned about ever losing them or not having them be safe. And then the last one we have personal things. So these are really for my husband and I. So birth certificates, um, passports, which are probably expired at this point. So I don't hold a whole lot is basically what I'm getting at because long-term storage, things that again are hard to replace or hard to, you know, obtain in some way, that's really a very small category of items that you need to hold on to. State issued items, those are definitely long-term storage things you want to store properly and in a place where you know where they are and can access them should you actually need it. And truly, I don't think that those items are the ones that cause paper clutter. It really is the short-term things that you just haven't made a decision on. And I know I've said it before, but clutter is very often a delayed decision. You haven't decided if you want it, if you need it, where you should put it. And with most things in life, if you just make the decision quickly, on the spot as soon as it comes into the home that is going to be your most efficient way to keep that clutter at bay because as soon as you put it in a pile and say i'll deal with it later that pile is going to grow and grow and grow and then it's going to take you a long time to go through each individual item now of course you can if there's things you need to shred you can get a shredder at home or you can build up enough if you do have a lot of paper clutter that needs to be gone through make a box and you can bring them even to the post office i'm pretty sure they have paper shredders or there are companies that will come and shred it for you there are ways to deal with these but it's just taking the step to address them and sort them into what is trash what is short-term storage and what do i need to store long term so i hope you guys found those tips to be helpful this video is part of the minimal moms a clutter-free january series and i will link to her down below and there will also be a playlist for all of the other content creators that are sharing their paper clutter tips. The first week was kitchens. We all shared kitchen organizing and decluttering tips. And then we talked about clothing and closets. This week is paper clutter. And next week we are going to be sharing storage and memorabilia, decluttering and organization. So if you are not yet already subscribed, I'd love for you to stick around and be sure that you are here to check out that video. I am very excited to be wrapping up our storage room. I shared just this past week how we are finally tackling that space. We have a very large storage room in our basement and it is a huge project to get it decluttered and organized, but we are making progress and I'm really excited to share that video with you guys next week. So I'll be talking to you soon. Take care, bye.